Pooltech and Fairchild, name a more iconic duo that are desired by mix engineers. So I just finished up tracking some session drums for a client and I thought, why not try and do a drum mix using only Pooltech EQs and only using the Fairchild compressor? And let's see how far we can take this and what kind of sound we can get. And then later in the mix, we're gonna add Black Salt Audio's silencer into the mix to see if it cleans it up nicely. And we'll also add Black Salt Audio's Clipper, which is on sale at the moment, it's 40% off. So I'll put a link below to where you can go and check that out. By using that link, you help support this channel as well. So here's a little mix that I prepared earlier. Once we're done listening to this, we're gonna wipe it clean and start over and try and get a similar result. Okay, so you can hear it was way more exciting than those raw drums. But yeah, let's wipe this clean. So I'm just gonna remove all of these plugins. I'm just gonna leave silencer there and we'll turn that on later to check out what it does to the drums. So while I'm mixing these, I'm just gonna keep Pro L2 on the drum bus just to avoid any loud peaks coming through. Okay, let's have a listen to what we're working with. So the drums sound great. They just need a bit of life given to them. So let's load up our first pull tech on our kick. So we're using the UAD pull techs and this is the EQP 1A. So this might shock you, but I'm gonna use some presets. There are some really great ones in the UAD pull tech presets. So what we're gonna do is grab our Jeff Bolding kick deep. Now this is kind of setting I would do anyway. So we got a boost at 30 Hertz and a cut at 30 Hertz. And then we have a boost at 4K and we're rolling off a lot of the top end. So we've got 20K, with that attenuation all the way up. So it takes away the kind of ticky top end in the kick and it also makes it feel a little bit deeper with that boost and cut of the same frequency. We're bringing out that sub a little bit more and it cuts away some of those dirty mids. So a really cool preset that I actually think sounds great for the kind of sound that I'm going for here. I don't really need the kick to be super bright on the top end. And then we're gonna come over to our kick out Sounds pretty great as is, but what I want to do is bring out more sub in this. So let's grab our EQP 1A again. So I'm going to put this at 5K and attenuate, and just roll off a whole bunch of top end. Pretty happy with that. Let's blend these together. And then I'm gonna grab the Pooltech MEQ5. This is sort of working on the mid range a little bit more now. And we're gonna do a cut at 200 Hertz. And a little boost at 1.5K. So this focuses the kick even more in that sort of deeper region, gets rid of that boxy kind of low mids. I'm gonna copy that over to our kick out. Just getting rid of that pillowy kind of sound. So onto our snare, let's get the pull tech on here. So again, we're gonna use a preset, snare fat. So very similar thing, boosting at 60 Hertz and cutting at 60 Hertz. So what that does is it creates this kind of presence shift. We get our boost and then we get a cut after it. So we're kind of boosting the fundamental that we want to hear and then we're cutting away a bit of those mids which are kind of yucky afterwards and it creates a nice kind of cleaned up sound. It's a great setting. I'm just going to boost 8K a tiny bit more. Happy with that. And then I'm gonna grab the MEQ5 again. Little cut at 500 Hertz. Just clean those mids out a tiny bit more and a tiny boost at 200. Sounding good. All right, let's copy this over to our snare bottom. Yeah, I'm pretty much gonna leave that. I'm happy with that. And let's blend our snare bottom and top together. All 
right, we're getting somewhere. Still a bit of cleaning up to go. Let's do our overheads. I'm just gonna solo one. I'll put it down the center so we can just listen to it. Just want to bring a little bit of air to this so we're boosting 10k and then we're doing a little cut at 30 hertz and that just gets rid of some of that low end rumble that we don't need and then let's add some meq5 as well and let's cut maybe around five or seven hundred hertz get rid of some of that mid-range mud Kind of hard to decide between five and 700. They're both kind of cluttering it up a little bit. Here I go with five, and then I'm gonna copy this over, reset that, and we're gonna cut maybe around four or 5K, just to get rid of some harshness out of these symbols. Try 5K for now, sounded pretty good. Now let's duplicate these settings over to our other overhead. Pan this one back out. So it's making them nice and bright. We'll see if they're too bright in a minute. We can maybe pull that 10K back a touch. And then see how this is sounding all together. starting to sound pretty nice. I think the bleed in our toms is kind of murking everything up a little bit. Um, I think once we kind of EQ this and get silencer in there, that's gonna really clean the kit up, but we'll leave all the bleed there for now. So let's copy this overhead pull tech to our hats and our ride mic and sort of see what that sounds like. Gonna go for that kind of like CLA thing where you boost that low end to get a bit of snare body into the hats mic and then also doing the cut at the same time to get rid of some of that mid-range grossness. A little boost around 10K, well a little boost, decent boost around 10K to bring a little bit of brightness out of these hats. This is a SM7B, so it's kind of a darker sounding hi-hat mic choice. The original hats in the other recording were really bright and they didn't really like the sound of that so much. So I went with something a little bit darker to keep our hats a little bit more subdued. Kind of cool. All right, let's look at this ride symbol. Let's get the mid-range EQ in here as well. Get rid of some of that 300 hertz. <laughs> There's always this annoying resonance. I don't know if it's just like my ride cymbal, but ride cymbals in general have this kind of woofy frequency that's in the low mids. And a little bit of it's good, but too much is just like, creates this cloudy sound. That's cool, cleans it up. All right, starting to get somewhere. Let's jump over to our room mics and load up the pool tech again. Now there's a really cool setting in here called a drum room crunch. So let's check this out. Again, I'm just gonna mono this room mic. It's a stereo room mic, but let's just put one side to the center and have a listen to it. Uh, it's pretty cool. Now, what I don't really want to do is boost a lot of low end in here. We've already got a very thumpy kick sound, so I'm just going to pull this out. But I do like the idea of driving the mids a bit more. So we're going to keep that roll off, maybe pull this 4K back a touch. All 
So we're getting rid of that really bright top end in the room sound, driving those mids more. And this will make the room sound a little bit bigger. And we don't need all that crispy top end because we've got all of that in the overheads and our close mics. I might even cut a little bit of 30 Hertz. So even though I loaded that preset, I completely changed it, but it helped me get close to the idea of what I wanted. So it can be fun to just dive into the presets, see what sort of sounds are in there, and then tweak them to your heart's desire, which is what we've just done. All right, I'm gonna copy this over to our room right. So we've got room left, room right, and we've got these panned at 40 and 40. I like that sort of making the low end feel a little bit tighter now that we've pulled some of that out of the room sound. Now we've got this ambience mic. Now this mic sits in the hallway out here and I also had the drum room door shut. So it's kind of like dark and muffled because it's not getting the kit sound directly. It's kind of like outside the club kind of sound. It's a really cool sound. But what we're gonna do is pull out a bunch of that low end as well. So I'm just gonna copy over that drum room setting. get rid of that subbiness out of it. Let's have a listen to all our room mics together. Let's have a quick reminder, what did these raw drums sound like before? Starting to sound pretty good, adding a little bit of life to them. Now let's find some toms and get these toms sounding nice. All right, right here where there's a bunch of cymbals and everything going on. Obviously very annoying, but we're just gonna loop this and play with these settings. Pretty cool. Let's get some mid-range EQ on here. So the MEQ5 again. Bring in a little bit of 1.5K in and a little cut of 300 Hertz. I think that sort of cleans it up nicely. All right, let's copy this over to our floor tom. Sounds great. And then let's have a look at our mid-range. Adding a little bit of that 1.5K in there helps the toms to still sound nice and clear in the mix without being too scooped. So we need that little bit of mid-range presence. Nice, sounding nice and fat and attacky, which is what I really like about toms. Not a big fan of sort of like muffled tom sounds. I'm gonna add some mid-range EQ to our room sound. I'm just gonna cut maybe like a little bit of 500 Hertz. Boost a touch of 200. makes the mids feel a little bit tighter. All right, sounding pretty cool. Let's see if we can tighten this up a little bit with some compression. So let's get our Fairchild in the game now. So on the kick, let's see if we can tighten this kick sound up a little bit. I'm gonna go with like a fast release.
just controls that low end a little bit. So it's sort of not as subby. It's still all there, but it just feels tighter. Copy this over to our kick out. Gonna go slower release on this one. All right, and then let's get our snare drum. Ooh, this is adding some nice roundness to the snare. It's taking away a little bit of that harshness in the top end. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like that. Copy that to our snare bottom. On our rack tom. I think that's nice. Let's put that onto our floor tom. Okay, and then on our overheads, let's get our fair chart on here again. Gonna go with a slower release, just so the cymbals don't get pushed up so much in our face with the compression. Let's copy that to our other overhead. Let's crush these rooms a little bit. Open up that side chain a bit. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Let's copy that over to all of our rooms. Awesome, let's put this on our drum bus. So Fairchild on the drum bus now. Just a touch of compression on this. Okay, so we've probably got about half a million dollars worth of Pultec EQs and compressors on this drum mix if we were to do this with hardware. So thankfully we can do this with plugins and get a kind of similar result. I know there's people out there who be like, that sounds nothing like a real Pultec or a real Fairchild, but you know, whatever. It sounds cool and it gives us the, the essence of the sound of that gear. So raw drum sounding a little bit dark and muffled over there, but now that we've had a bit of fun with our vintage hardware plugins, it's starting to sound pretty juicy. So the next thing I wanna do is show you what it sounds like if we start gating these and getting rid of bleed in the close mics. Let's see if it gets a tighter sound or if it just kind of takes away from the vibe of the kit. Cause it is sounding okay with all of that bleed in there at the moment. But I know for me personally, I like a, a tidy kind of drum sound. And if using this gets rid of some harshness of cymbals that are sneaking through, then that's always a plus. So for those of you who don't know, Black Cell Audio have a plugin called Silencer. It's a drum gate and you just select which drum you're gating. So at the moment we're on the kick, you set your threshold. So it's reacting to the kick. And then you can set the amount of reduction. So for a kick, I want it to be around minus 40 and that's gonna drop it away nice and tight really short length, so we don't have a lot of rumble from the kick. And the D bleed, you can push this up or down to deal with cymbal bleed. There's not much in the kick, so I'm just gonna leave it at 0%. And then we just go and do that to all our close mics. So I've done it on the kick out, done it to the snare, done it to the snare bottom, done it to the toms. And let's have a listen to what this sounds like. So it is actually making a really big difference pulling all this cymbal out. So I'm guessing there's a fair bit of cymbal noise and stuff in the toms as well as in the snare mic. And that's just made it sound 
really nice. It's actually, the kit has warmed up in a really pleasant way now. So I know it's kind of like cheating because I said I was going to use just the pool tech and the Fairchild, but adding that gate into the equation really makes this sound quite nice. And then the other thing I wanted to demonstrate to you was Black Salt Audio's Clipper. So we're going to chuck this on a couple of channels and see if we can kind of like control the dynamics a little bit better and if it affects the drum sound in a negative way or if we can keep it fairly transparent. Super simple plugin, basically pull this threshold down until you get the desired amount of clipping and then you can boost gain into the signal as well if you want to make it a little bit hotter. So you can really drive it, get your drums sounding a little bit crunchy by making them clip really hard, but I just want some sort of gentle clipping going on here. So we're kind of controlling that peak volume a little bit and that's all I want to do. Now let's copy this over to our kick out. And then our snare. We can kind of push this a little harder on the snare without it sounding bad. It's kind of like when there's a lot of low end and it starts distorting and clipping. That's what I don't really enjoy the sound of that much. But on something like the snare that's a bit more mid-range, I think we can get away with clipping it a bit harder. I think that's pretty cool. Let's have a look at our snare bottom. Now our toms. And our floor tom. That's sweet too. Now let's do a little bit of clipping to our overheads. So it's usually drum rolls and fills where the drummer gets a little bit excited, starts hitting harder. So I'm a bit guilty of that too. And let's just see if we can sort of clip a little bit of that stuff so it doesn't come through too heavy with the peaks. Let's copy that over to our other overhead. I'm just going to leave the rooms, going to leave the close hats. So to my ears, I can't really hear any huge difference. We're kind of controlling our peak volume a little bit more. So that's giving us more headroom in the mix. So I'm going to turn off Pro L2 on the drum bus and then I'll take Clipper on and off over this drum fill and have a look at how much difference there is in the peak volume on this drum bus. All right, so we hit around minus 2.8. So minus 4.8. So we have taken away 2 dBs of peak volume from the drums. And this is how we achieve greater loudness in a mix by doing these little steps, gentle clipping like that, and it's not even really perceivable by our ears. And yet we're making the mix louder because then we can push this harder without having all those big peaks coming through. Now let's do one more quick comparison between using a clipper on the drum bus versus using a limiter. So I'm going to set this to minus nine and then I'm going to push this up to minus nine and we have it on unity gain mode. So we're not actually getting nine dBs of volume. It's just pushing in nine and it's pulling the ceiling down nine. So to my ears, the clipper keeps the transient really crisp. So if you like that sound, you like your drums really crisp, then that's a great choice to have a little bit of clipping on your drum bus. Whereas our limiter, we have it on transparent mode. So this is kind of like the crispest mode in the Pro L2. It still sounds like it rounds the sound off a little bit because it's being pushed down rather than being chopped off. Just different tones. So depending what you like the sound of, if you like that being rounded out a little bit more, limiter is a good choice. Let's do a quick before and after. So you can understand why they are such popular plugins and pieces of gear because they just do sound really great. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this little drum mix using our Pooltech and our Fairchild. 
and hopefully it gives you a bit of an idea of how to use those plugins and pieces of gear in a drum mix. Make sure you hit like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to support this channel, make sure you use the links below if you want to go check out Black Salt Audio's plugins and also make sure you go to my website and check out my drum samples. If you're interested in seeing how I like to mix screaming vocals, then check out this next video coming up.